a man's fantasy became reality in a form never seen before, a giant cooking arena, a kitchen stadium. The motivation for spending his fortune to create Kitchen Stadium was to encounter new original cuisines, which could be called true artistic creations. On a to realize his dream, he first secretly started selecting the top chefs of various styles of cooking. And he named his men the Iron Chefs, the invincible men of culinary skills. Iron Chef Japanese is Masaharu Morimoto. Iron Chef French is Hiroyuki Sakai. Iron Chef Chinese is Chen Kenichi. And Masahiko Kobe is Iron Chef Italian. The Kitchen Stadium is the arena where Iron Chefs await the challenges of master chefs from around the world. Both the Iron Chef and Challenger have one hour to tackle the theme ingredient of the day, using all their senses, skills, creativity, there to prepare artistic dishes never tasted before. And if ever a challenger wins over the Iron Chef, he or she will gain the people's ovation and fame forever. But this man has even bigger dreams. Yes, he is on a quest to see and experience more from around the world. In Paris. In Beijing. in Hong Kong and other exotic locales. Kitchen Stadium is the arena where you will meet the master chefs from around the world and their artistic creations. What inspiration will today's challenger bring and how will the Iron Chef fight back? The heat will be on! If memory serves me right, in the medieval era of Japanese history, Yamaguchi Prefecture played a critical role. Many warriors from the time period came here to take down the shogunate government. Here at Yuda Hot Springs, we have found a chef with the samurai warrior spirit. He is known as an expert at using seaweed broth, which I have been interested in for quite a long time. He uses different kinds of seaweeds for different dishes, which, I might add, is not easy to do at all. He says that the broth is the key to the success of any dish and I just had to try it for myself. Today's challenger, the conjurer of seaweed broth from Yuda Hot Springs in Yamaguchi, Takeshi Kajimoto. He started his career at age 18 at a top restaurant in Osaka. There he learned all the basics of preparing broth. He quickly climbed to an important position at that restaurant. And at 28, he was hired by a top hot spring hotel, Tokiwa, in Yuda Hot Springs. Kelp seaweed for taking broth are all very different by where they come from, and the way you use them gives you totally different results in the dishes that you make. Kajimoto seems to be on a constant quest for new creations, using his broth-making skills as a base. So now, Kajimoto, show us the true way of using seaweed broth and take down the Iron Chef. This is not a show, it's a contest.
私が長年研究をしてきた和食の基本昆布そんな昆布を使いこなしだしにこだわる昆布使いの名手がようやく見つかりましたさあ皆さん大きな拍手でお迎えください山口湯田温泉常盤料理長梶本武史 Walking the red carpet into Kitchen Stadium, a strapping young man who's already garnered a reputation for his expertise in preparing seaweed broth, a key element in fine Japanese cuisine. Today, he'll show us how it's done as he tries to topple an iron chef. It's an honor to be here. Yes. Well, the very base of my dishes. Yes, it determines the outcome of every dish I make. Yes. Thank you, I'll do my best. Ascending into Kitchen Stadium, the Iron Chefs, Japan's culinary leaders. Iron Chef Chinese Chen Kenichi, Iron Chef French Hiroyuki Sakai, and Iron Chef Japanese Masaharu Morimoto. Week in, week out, their creations break new ground. So, who will fight? Morimoto-san, please! Yes, the seaweed samurai aims at Morimoto, who's also gained fame at a relatively young age. Masaharu Morimoto, the top chef at Nobu, the famous Japanese restaurant in New York. Viewed as some as a modern day warlord, shaking up Japanese cuisine with his neo Japanese approach. But will the Iron Chef Japanese be able to turn back the challenge of a chef well schooled in seaweed broth? We shall see. Kobu, to I show no e s h o g u z a といえば、昆布を主食にしているあの高級外しかありません。まさに磯の味覚の王様。特に今日は地元では象の足と呼ばれる超大物まで揃いました。それでは発表します。今日のテーマはこれです Today's challenger, the conjurer of kelp broth, Takeshi Kajimoto, challenging Iron Chef Japanese Masaharu Morimoto. Abalone, the theme ingredient. Kajimoto's prepared 10 different types of kelp to produce his magic before we've even begun. Is he intimidating the Iron Chef? All right, opening gong sounds, and right off the bat, the assistants are scurrying around the kitchen stadium. And the challenger and Iron Chef already have dashed up to the ingredient stand, grabbing all the abalone they can for what they deem to be the best ones. Hattori, well, all actually, of them are fresh? Actually, not uh, exactly, no. There are two different types here. One is called magai, or red abalone, which is kind of brownish in color. Okay, And these that? are best when steamed or processed other ways. But on the other hand, we also have black abalone, which is great for raw items like sashimi or marinated. All right, red and black and some huge ones there, the big ones known as elephant's feet. Yeah, that's right. They come from the waters of Chiba, the Chiba prefecture. The, the huge ones are about, oh, 300 bucks each. 300 bucks a pop, unbelievable. And the challenger there already working on preparing his kelp broth, gonna give it his best shot to win in this battle. Yeah, this right here is Rausu kelp. Rausu kelp, what's that? Well, production volume is very small, actually. It's quite rare, only 4 to 5% of the market, but it's good when you're looking for a thicker flavor. All right, and today in Kitchen Stadium, we've got 10 different kinds of kelp. Should be interesting to see how Kajimoto manipulates all of these. The young man hails from Yamaguchi Prefecture. Yes, go ahead, Ota. Reporting from the challenger side where Chef Kajimoto is preparing his kelp broth for best results, he says especially considering the time limitations.
station. He'll be making some cuts in the kelp and then dipping it into lukewarm water. He tells me the best broth is ready when the temperature of the water becomes room temperature. Hmm, didn't know that. And that's what he's preparing as we speak. All right, sounds rather involved having to control the temperature even. Yeah, of course you have to do this because if you like boiled it, it would uh, smell none too pleasant. All right, well, we wouldn't want any of that around. Before we go any further, let's introduce today's guest for the battle. First, next to me, actress Hitomi Takahashi. It's a pleasure to be here. I hear you like watching the program. Yes. And Iron Chef Italian Kobe is the best? Yes. You like his approach? Uh-huh. Okay, how about Japanese food? Personally, I like Japanese food best. And hearing that today's ingredient was abalone, I was very thrilled. All uh-huh. right, well, good for you. Thank you. And uh, we also have actor Tsurutaro Katooka. Thanks for coming. Hello. Nice to be here. Your first time to see Morimoto? Yes, I, it's uh, my first time to for, see this uh, man from New York. All right, uh, for starters, what about his outfit? Uh, y- yes, he, he does look like a unique person, an interesting personality. I'm looking forward to his uh, dishes. Well, every time out of his four or five dishes, at least one's been way out, beyond the norm. Really? So don't be surprised. And, of course, our commentator, Dr. Yukio Hattori. Thank you, nice to be here. And once again, the theme ingredient for today is abalone. Okay, now look at the Iron Chef here. Interesting. A rolling slice job here. Yeah, he's rotating the abalone. He's trying to make thin, long strips of abalone. It's Hmm. kind of like peeling the skin off of an apple, you see? And actually, in some areas, they dry this and sell it that way. Hmm. Anyway, this is a classic way of slicing abalone. All right. Fukuisan, go. I asked the Iron Chef what he thinks about today's theme, and he said, I'm really thrilled. In the States, it's been illegal to catch abalone for about two years, so today I'm going to go for it using loads of this stuff. All right, and if they could catch them, they wouldn't throw these ones back. They're that big. Yeah, I would say so. And also, when you look at the design on the back of Morimoto's costume, uh-huh. this was called Noshi, and the style of his slicing abalone just a minute ago is called Noshi slicing, or making thin strips. Wow. Well, maybe he should uh, get that one copyrighted. Might be a market for that. (laughs) Fukuisan? Yes, take it. The challenger is still working on that broth that he was preparing before. He's even gone as far as to actually regulate the temperature of the water in these bowls. All right, double-barreled broth making. A replay right there again. Temperature is crucial to this. Fukuisan? Yes. The challenger has two bowls here, both with lukewarm water, but one has daosu kelp in it while the other one contains Japanese kelp for a subtle difference in flavor. All right, still the same two there. And now on the other side, the Iron Chef He's here. grilling the abalone strips? Yes, those are the ones he just sliced, actually. All right, abalone being cued on a charcoal grill. Shouldn't take long for these strips to cook up, and then we'll see what else he does to them after they're done. Okay, I noticed the challenger is using some azuki beans in this. Azuki beans? No, sure it is, isn't it? Oh, yes, you're, you're correct, yeah, Doc. Yeah, see? Yeah. And some daikon radish pieces in there, too. Yeah, that's right. And also the innards are in a pot. But why the beans in there? Well, this is actually a standard dish. It's called ogura stew with the azuki beans in it. It's quite good, actually. Mm, never even heard of that one before. All right. Fukuisan? Yes. Oh, it looks so good. Uh, not to interrupt, but I now know the list of ingredients the challenger has in his rice cooker. Okay. Rice, of course, plus the Japanese kelp broth, light soy sauce, and the black abalone. Hmm. Okay, now this Japanese kelp is the same kelp that Kicho, the well-known Japanese restaurant, uses. It actually comes from the same area of Japan, and it's kind of a subtle sweet taste. Another nugget of knowledge. And now from the Iron Chef. Fukuisan? He's only used a shell. Yes, go ahead. In the Iron Chef's pressure cooker, he has the meat of the abalone separated from the shells, and he's stewing both of them in Japanese sake. So meat in there, out of the shell, and the shell. Right, and he's using the red abalone for this stewed item, because he knows the difference. And also so, some... Daikon radish. Right, yeah, thank you, Actually, Doc. it makes the abalone tender. Oh, yes? I didn't know that. Yeah, and now he's grating abalone. Oh, what is this called? Mm. This is called Tororo Awabi, or grated abalone. Hmm. This is really something, actually. You should try it. Oh, so luxurious. Wow. All right. And 15 minutes gone already. The grated abalone is almost like a paste in the Iron Chef now. These are the barbecued strips of abalone. Please, uh, yes, go ahead. In this pot that we're looking at, the Iron Chef has the grilled abalone strips, and he's going to boil them in just plain old water. Abalone alone could make a great soup. Maybe he'll do that, I guess. Yeah, well, chemically speaking, the succinic acid is what tastes good. All right, and now the challenger with the milk. Yes. Here in the challenger's pot, we have butter, flour, and milk being blended together. Hmm, that's simple enough. And check it out. He's trying to have a dish with a Western touch in his lineup to compete with Morimoto. Maybe a gratin. All right, we'll see. And now on the Iron Chef, ooh, nasty. Okay, this is a pike eel. Spiked pike eel. 
Pike eel is a delicacy of summer here in Western Japan, and summer is actually the best time for this fish. Well, it wasn't for this one. And speaking of Western Japan, the big boss man of Osaka, Toshiro Kandagawa, is up in the royal box. How'd he get in? And boy, is he prepared with binoculars in hand. He's even taken notes. Now on the challenger side. Okay, it's the same. Pike eel is what Same he's deal, spiked as well. Interesting. Same ingredient. Now, I think what he'll do is use this for a stew or something along those lines, together with the abalone. We're back and we're on Iron Chef Morimoto's side, chopping action. Rice cooker's engaged, take it. Into his rice cooker, the challenger, Chef Kajimoto, has added megai abalone and another broth that he made from rishidi kelp and bonito. All right, both with rice and both seem to be following similar game plans. And now, back with Morimoto with the pike eel apparently mincing it, most likely for making fish balls, I would guess. Yeah, I'm guessing the same thing, like fish balls in a soup or something. Okay, and just right there, he's combined it with... With the abalone, yeah. Okay. Interesting. So, Hattori, fish balls, you think, to be served in a soup? Is uh, that the idea here by Iron Chef Morimoto? That's about all I can figure. I can't think of anything else that he can do with it, really. All right. Well, let's see how it goes. Fukui-san? Yes. You're right in this grating pot that we've been watching the Iron Chef mincing pike eel and grated abalone together into a kind of sauce, maybe. All right, thanks. Now, this too from the Iron Chef and side. And this, I believe, is liver. Oh, okay, I think he'll be grilling this. He'll be grilling the abalone liver. It's going to be going into the oven pronto right now. And what will this one end up like? Is that what Chef Kandagawa is spying at this moment? Some intelligence being gathered here? And now Morimoto, the fish paste, he's working. That is now going into boiling water here. Okay, now these are the fish balls with the abalone in it. No doubt about that. Fukusa? Yes. These are a kind of dumpling made from the mix of grated abalone and minced pike eel, as well as yams, salt, and soy sauce. And the soup is his own rishidi kelp broth. Hmm. Okay, so he's using kelp broth as well. Sure, he's going to have to go head on against Kajimoto in that department. And now the challenger spooning out something. I think he's got some yams here as well. Yam and abalone, maybe. Hmm. All right, well, he's hard at work there. 30 minutes gone, 30 minutes to go, entering the second half of the abalone battle. No halftime break. Fukuizan? Yes. Did you see the challenger pasting something on the abalone, the yes. white sauce? Well, that's also grated yam and pike eel. Okay, Hattori, what's the deal here? Okay, the same approach with the Iron Chef so far, but actually he may steam this instead. Okay, now the Iron Chef does have a steamed item too, steamed in sake for a real change of taste. Yes, he did have one. Mm, it looks so good. Yes, go ahead, Ota. In the frying pan, the Iron Chef is adding sake to abalone still in the shell. Ah, okay, right here, a replay. What a load of sake in there. That's bold. And some of that abalone still looks like it's alive and kicking, <laughs> but not for much longer. At least with the sake, it went out in style. <laughs> and here we've got... Uh, butter? Butter, yeah. So it's a steak? Well, they do this in oh, New York. I can't wait. Yeah, abalone <laughs> steak. Now, normally, of course, they do it with wine, however. So. All right. Well, there's the first connection to the Big Apple uh -huh. from the Iron Chef. Oh. Fukuisan? Yes. The challenger is placing chunks of abalone, which he had previously sautéed in butter, back into the shells, on top of which he is spooning on his white sauce, after which he spreads out on a layer of sautéed potatoes, and to top it all off, he'll cover everything with sautéed abalone like a lid. Wow. Wow, okay, got it. So the challenger here sounds like it's working here a gratin of his own making. Now, the Iron Chef has some wakame seaweed. Now, that's what the abalone lives on. Well, they're coexisting right there in that pan. Fukuisan? <laughs> yes. In this container, the Iron Chef is covering everything with wakame seaweed, and the uh, contents are shells, liver, and meat of the abalone, each ingredient separated from each other, all covered with seaweed. All right, and that pan is going into the oven right now. Yeah, into the oven, grilling them as is. But without anything added there for flavoring. Just as is, right? We didn't see him add anything. No. Just the seaweed. Well, maybe Kandagawa caught it. And now, here's the grilled liver out of the oven, a sheet of grilled abalone liver. I don't know, would you call that mouth-watering? Well, he'll probably break this into small pieces to sprinkle mm, on something I else. I think so, too. Hope so. And now, on the challenger side, going into hot water, it's not boiling. No. Not going to grill it. No, he's not going to grill it. This is the grated pike eel and yam potatoes mixed together. 
pasted onto abalone. Well, this is leading me to believe that they'll be used in a stew or soup of some sort. Well, with the conjure of broth, we certainly would expect to see a very good soup, or at least a stew today. Cuisine? Yes. The abalone that you're seeing here were used only to make the broth. So unfortunately, this abalone meat will evidently not be eaten. Okay, and this is from yes, the Iron broth. Chef, and that's a little different. Not gonna that's use it. That's an understatement. <laughs> only here in Kitchen Stadium, Katoka, would you have the luxury of doing this at 300 bucks a pop. Abalone just for the broth, what a deal for all of us today. And now, what's the challenger doing here? I think he's making these into boats. What? For serving Tying something. A container, huh? Yeah, a container, a bowl. At least oh. that's what I'm thinking here. All right, well, he is so well versed in kelp. Challenger Kajimoto, a seaweed boat. Squeeze on. Hope it'll float. Go ahead. Do you remember the two bowls with the two types of kelp in lukewarm water? Yes, sure. He says he's going to keep them that way for a while, taste them later, and use the best of the two for a special broth. Well, that is called hedging your bet right there. Okay, I see. So he has Rishiri and Japanese kelp. Quite the perfectionist. First, getting the best kelp you can find fine trying to make broth with two of them and then choosing the one that turns out best and that too is another kitchen stadium luxury i'd say hey what what is going on with the what this one this is one of the guys with kandagawa they're making a list of dishes for both sides it seems so if you're scoring at home that's six to four to three okay i've got an idea what's going on here kandagawa is doing some advanced scouting uh, he's planning to challenge Morimoto sometime in the future. He wants to know exactly how he operates ahead of their encounter. And that should be a good one when it does happen here. Fukuisan? Yes. I spoke to the Iron Chef for a moment and mentioned that I noticed his dishes were pretty standard today. And he said, right. hey, the people who know abalone best are the fishermen. I'm making items that would please them or anyone else. All right. Well, looking at his dishes so far, yeah, you're right to say that his approach is pretty much orthodox. Yes, it hasn't been the typical Morimoto performance, at least so far in this match. Uh, sorry about that, Katoka. But he, he looked so different from the other chefs. <laughs> yeah, but based on what we've seen of Morimoto up till now, today's been a rather conventional approach by the Iron Chef Japanese. Yeah. 15 minutes to go. All right, 15 minutes left, fourth Kusan? quarter, go. The crumbs that he's breading onto the abalone with the egg are crushed rice crackers. Wow, oh, not any okay. regular bread crumbs, no, crushed rice crackers. Fourth quarter, back with the challenger. Okay, now how is he going to cook this? Grill it? Hmm. Fry it? You know, if he fries it, it's going to look like stuffed crab shells. Well, we'll have to find out about that. Right now, the pressure cooker's been opened with azuki beans inside. What do you think? It'll taste a little sweet? Well, not really. Not even with those beans. Oh. Hmm. And see? He's got pumpkin in there, too. So this will be more like a vegetable stew. Hmm. A home-style stew? Exactly. Home cooking. Fukuisan? Yes. A review of the pressure cooker contents includes a sheet of rishiri kelp at the bottom, sake, soy sauce, sweet sake, salt, bonito broth, daikon radish, wow. black abalone, azuki beans, and now, as you saw, pumpkin. Ah. Mm, but it does sound a bit sweet, you know, an, a natural sweetness. Hold it, home-style stew with abalone? Yeah, rich family's home-style stew. Yeah, Katoka, invite us over sometime. Fukuisan? Yes. The challenger just told me that this stew in the pressure cooker is actually a local specialty from Yamaguchi Prefecture. Okay, I thought so. And it's called Itoko stew. Okay, I've heard of that. Itoko in Japanese means cousins, of course, and it refers to the similarity in sweetness between the azuki beans and the pumpkin, almost like they're related somehow. Uh -huh. okay. okay. I never knew that. Ten okay. minutes to go. Ten minutes left now, so it's a regional specialty. Oh, yeah, I thought it was some kind of local dish where he comes from, something from his neck of the woods. And he is frying something there. Yes, deep frying, in they go, the challenger here. Oh, okay, a croquette. Yes, housed in the abalone shells, croquettes being deep fried. Okay, what this will do, by doing it with this, it'll deep fry one side of it. This is kind of an interesting approach. All right, now let's go back over to the Iron Chef side, shall we? Yes, here we are. He's got some big pieces of liver there. Now, did he cook this in the pressure cooker? I believe so. With the meat and liver. Fukusan? Yes. Yes, he did saute them in sake and butter first. Okay. okay. Oh, it's okay. Sake and butter, yeah. Right. So we can call this a steak then, I guess. Okay, now just what's he going to do with the livers? Oh, boy, the liver. He'll probably use it like a garnish. As a garnish? Aren't they bitter, Doc? Oh, actually, no, not at all. All right. It's creamy. It tastes quite good, actually. Hmm. Okay, now check out the challenger here. 
Yes. It's already finished. Yeah, this is pike eel stew in a seaweed Fukuzan. boat. What's in this one? Yes. This is the boiled abalone that he had sandwiched around grated pike eel and yams. Right, right. That's what he had okay, in there. Okay, I remember that one. And he'll add soup to this one. Yeah, I think so. That'd be the way okay. to do it. A soup with the kelp broth. That appears to be done now. And whoa, take a look at this. Oh. Get a load of this again here from the Challenger. Wow. What a package. Wow. And Kamioka's has also got some lotus roots in there, too. Now, this one is the cousin to the stew we were just talking about, right? Yeah, I believe so. Okay, a regional specialty from Yamaguchi Prefecture made with pride. And now the yeah, Iron here we go. rice cooker's open. Oh, oh boy, no, that, that looks great. great. Mm. Yeah. Abalone rice. Who could ask for more? Look at the amount of abalone. Well, I've never had one Sorry, with so Doc, much I'm abalone. Eat on. Yes, go ahead, Ota. Just to review what the Iron Chef has in this rice cooker, rishidi kelp broth, bonito broth, soy sauce, salt, red abalone, and liver. Stop, big fella. That's enough. It sounds too good right there. And now... Also opening his rice cooker, the Challenger. Oh, boy. Their rice is coming out. That looks good. Fukuzan? Yes. On this side, the Challenger's rice cooker contains black abalone, not red, in Japanese kelp broth and light soy sauce. All right, he used black abalone okay, and the, the kelp abalone. broth, the key to his creations, too. Okay, I see. Well, what do you know? I mean, red abalone, megai abalone, that's the one which is supposed to be better for stewing or cooking, but... Kajimoto here has something special in mind using black abalone for this dish. It looks good, and so does the stew right there, and the deep-fried one, too, scanning his dishes so far. Five minutes to go. All right, five minutes left. Kajimoto's already putting the finishing touches on some of his dishes. Two, perhaps three, look to be done right now. And on the Iron Chef's side, the soup's on into the bowls. Very thick right there, almost looking like it has a Western flavor to it. Yeah, it does have that appearance, doesn't it? Consomme or something else added to get that thickness? Fukuisan? Yes. In these bowls, the Iron Chef has Shanghai white cabbage, mini daikon radish, okay. and a generous portion of abalone sautéed in butter and soup. All right, well, that sounds like a winner, Ota. And with the abalone sautéed in butter, that will provide the Western touch here for Morimoto with this dish. We will swing over to the challenger side. Now it's decision time. Got to make it. Which kelp broth does he finally use from yeah. the two he'd been preparing? What's he going to do? Hmm. He's got to make the choice now. Fukuisan? Yes. He has finally chosen, and it's the Japanese kelp broth that he's going to use. All right. Okay, now that kelp has a subtle sweetness to it, particularly this one. Okay, so Kajimoto's going for the subtle flavor, and now the Iron Chef has really picked up the pace, slicing the abalone here and scrambling elsewhere to add finishing touches. What you're seeing right here are the abalone pieces which were wrapped in wakame seaweed and then grilled. Apparently, he won't be serving them with the seaweed. That was just for flavoring. Well, the seaweed will never harm anything else, so that's okay. All right. Fukuisan? Yes, go, Ota. The Japanese kelp broth that the challenger chose is being used in this dish, these glass bowls with the ice in it. And okay. in these dishes, he has the raw abalone to which he has added the Japanese kelp broth that he was planning on using. Hmm. All okay, right. now usually this is finished just in plain old ice water. I guess what he wanted to do was add originality by dipping them into the broth for a while. Huh. All right, sounds good. Abalone soaking up kelp broth. Okay, now look at the Iron Chef. He was just putting some cheese on sticks before. What's with that? Fukuisan? Yes. Yes, the cheese Hattori-san is talking about is actually two cheeses, One Gruyere cheese and Emmental cheese, along with cornstarch, abalone soup, and liver soup. You never know what he's going to do. He surprises me, too. This is cheese fondue. Back to you. Oh, cheese fondue. All right, now we get the real Morimoto. He's got to have that one unique dish. Yeah, he was looking rather orthodox today, but, you know, the last pitch, he threw us a change-up. No, more like a knuckleball. <laughs> I don't think most Japanese fishermen would take this type of thing with them out to sea. <laughs> so, Fish Iron Chef Morimoto back in his comfort zone, if not that of others. 30 seconds left now. The sheet of grilled liver being broken up and flakes sprinkled on top of the abalone right now. What is that all about? What is this? The Iron Chef saving his most curious pitch for the last moments here. 15 seconds left. The challenger kelp brought the foundation of his dishes. He did have an effect on Morimoto, except for that last dish. This is the most conservative we've ever seen, the Iron Chef Japanese. The final seconds ticking down, and that's it. A great battle. The cooking's done. The abalone battle is over. How did your dishes turn out with all that yes. wonderful broth? Oh, the broth is perfect, and my dishes are perfect. So yes. you're confident of winning against the Iron Chef? Sure. 
For the most part, you seemed rather conservative out there today. Always being aggressive is stressful, and you get criticized. Like the soup with steamed abalone, I follow the traditional rule of thumb, but always with my viewpoints, though. So what's the verdict? Ha! <laughs> mmm, Lord knows. Challenger Kajimoto is offering five dishes. First, marinated abalone. The cold and chewy abalone brings a soothing breeze to the taster's mouth. He prepared two kelp broths, but chose the one he determined that would best match the naturally sweet abalone. Second, boiled abalone and vegetables. Based on a local recipe from his region, the broth made from rishidi kelp and bonito is perfect, and the flavors of the vegetables are absorbed in the abalone. Third, abalone and pike eel stew. The kelp used as a bowl adds to the bonito broth as minced pike eel and grated yam dance in harmony aboard the boat. Fourth is fried abalone, a croquette fried in shell. Thin kelp slices are added as a garnish. He's come up with the French white sauce, adding a Western flavor to counter the Iron Chef. Last, grated yam and abalone over rice. Abalone boiled in kelp broth was grated, mixed with yam, and poured over abalone rice. Again, kelp slices add an interesting texture. The Iron Chef has six dishes to offer. First, abalone hors d'oeuvre. Two contrasting textures of abalone are presented. The sauce with gelatin is for the diced abalone, while the sauce with kelp broth is for the abalone strips. Second, boiled abalone butter flavored, a traditional technique of using sake to prepare abalone. Its texture matches the butter sauce. Third, abalone and pike eel balls. For this dish, abalone strips were used to make a truly wonderful and luxurious broth. Grilled abalone. Abalone served on a bed of char-broiled wakame seaweed. Flakes of grilled abalone liver accentuate the entire experience. Fifth is abalone rice. He used rishidi kelp and bonito broth to boil the rice. It's the aroma of the kelp that ties this whole dish together. Last, abalone cheese fondue. The fried abalone on skewers matches wonderfully with the rich cheese. Texture's another thing tasters will be surprised about. And the cheese sauce also contains abalone broth. Challenger Takeshi Kajimoto derives his inspiration from the sea, the conjurer of kelp broth, essential to exquisite Japanese cuisine. He'll put his best broth forward against Iron Chef Japanese Masaharu Morimoto. Chairman Kaga unveils a theme ingredient well suited to kelp in all its forms. The chefs have their hands full with abalone. The challenger produces a balanced set of five dishes. The Iron Chef answers with six in his most conservative approach to date. And now the moment of truth, tasting and judgment. On the panel today are Photographer Tenmei Kano, actress Hitomi Takahashi, actor Tsurutaro Katooka, and culinary critic Asako Kishi. First, the dishes of Challenger Kajimoto. Well, I needed to make broths very quickly today, so I used many different techniques for each dish that I had in mind. This one uses Japanese kelp. It's one of the best types of kelp. This is really so very delicate. I'm enjoying the subtle aroma of the kelp broth. Thank you. This liver and vinegar sauce, using too much could be too heavy, but with just enough, it's fantastic. This is a perfected abalone recipe, I think. Very sophisticated. It's very well done. His second dish, boiled abalone and vegetables, is sliced up for serving. What I did here was I added abalone to a local recipe that I like to prepare often. This is so tender. You look so happy. <laughs> <laughs> this is wonderful. I don't know what to I say. I see the mountains and fields first. As I'm eating, I start to hear the voices of the ocean as well. That's how I feel as I'm enjoying this. This is not too sweet. It has a subtle sweetness. It's very sophisticated, I think. If I had more time, the kelp broth would become even better. The aroma is very nice. It's a little sweet, isn't it? Ah, uh, yes, I added new onions in it. Huh? The y onions are adding yes. sweetness? I don't like the onions in this. Mm, it, they make it too mild, in my opinion. 
But I like this. It's a subtle and nice flavor. Very good. Well, I'd like to thank this program for letting me use this much abalone and kelp. Really wonderful. Thank you, ma'am. The grated abalone on top. I've never had this before. I'm just trying to say this makes me so thank happy. You. <laughs> this is called grated abalone sauce. This alone, without the rice, could qualify as a side dish for drinking sake. It's uh, very nice. He brought the rice at the end to, to close everything nicely. It was a very enjoyable combination. I really like the tender texture of the abalone in the boiled dish. So tender. It made me really Thank happy. You. His dishes confirmed that preparing kelp broth is no easy task. His arrangement of the courses were very sophisticated. I enjoyed them thoroughly. And now, Iron Chef Morimoto's dishes. On the U.S. West Coast, abalone fishing has been prohibited for over two years, so I haven't been using it. The Japanese abalone I use today is also different from the American one in aroma and taste. Even more than the abalone, the sauce is very good. The taste is very good, but it's a bit tough, isn't it? Tougher than I thought. I say this perhaps because I have been enjoying the splendidly tender ones that the challenger has given us. I don't think so. It doesn't bother me so much. I enjoy the chewy texture. I guess I'm getting old. <laughs> I like the texture of this dish. The pike eel and what else is in this? Well, I've added lotus roots. Ah, I really like the crispy texture. Don't get me wrong, I don't have anything personal I against know. you, but I think this is a bit too salty for a boiled item. The flavor is like that of a clam soup, don't you think? The saltiness of the seafood is probably adding to the salt he used. I grilled the liver and sprinkled it on top. Yes. This will remind you of the ocean. It's very simple and, and so good. Thanks. Perhaps this is the best way of enjoying the original flavor of the dish. Orthodox? Mm. Not in particular. This is not abalone rice, it's rice grains among abalone chunks. <laughs> this is uh, my first time to try his dishes. Uh, my impression of the Iron Chef is that he's uh, quite an orthodox chef, and some people have been telling me that he will shock me with his dishes, but uh, I didn't find that, you know? The Challenger had a similar dish. I can't help comparing the two. This dish alone is perfected and very good, but I remember the Challenger's dish, and I start comparing. I'm saying in my mind, which is better, which has more originality. I can't stop comparing. Finally, the abalone cheese fondue, what they've been looking forward to. How will this Morimoto creation be received? I fried the abalone once, as you can see, and you'll be dipping them, just like this, into the cheese fondue. I wish I had a glass of wine right now. You know, whoa, that would be so great, uh, perfect. The cheese accentuates the flavor of the abalone, I think. Frying the abalone locks in the flavor. I always look forward to your unique approaches and ideas. You know, dishes that no one else would uh, dare try preparing. So in that sense, you seem to be a bit conservative. Yes, he was conservative. But I also confirm that he can be orthodox if he wants to be. The verdict moments away of the two men who will carry the day. $10,000 worth of abalone. That's what was used in Kitchen Stadium today. The challenger, an expert in making kelp broth and using the best seaweed for it, has proven himself to be a worthy competitor for the Iron Chef. Against Kajimoto and with this theme, Morimoto had to pull back from his usual creative explorations. Will that cost him in the end? It's time to know who takes it, whose cuisine reigns supreme. It's Kajimoto, the challenger wins it! 
And look at his entourage. A huge win for the young man from Yamaguchi Prefecture. He has cut down the Iron Chef thanks to his expertise in preparing perfect broth. All his training and hard work have paid off big time, earning him a shocking upset today over Morimoto. All right, check the scoring. Kano, 18-16, the challenger. Takahashi, 18-17, the challenger. Katoka, 20-19, the challenger. And Kishi, 18-16, the Iron Chef. Challenger Kajimoto takes it 3-1 over a stunned Morimoto. The conjurer of kelp broth, the right kelp for the right dish, working his magic, comes through in the biggest moment of his career. Takeshi Kajimoto defeats the Iron Chef. The challenger's rice was just, uh, Awesome. That was the key. It never left my mind, you know? The abalone was tender and perfectly flavored, though subtle. I was very moved. <laughs> <laughs>